Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Go for Agriculture. So in today's lecture, we're going to see the basic terms and definitions of agricultural economics. So this is the continuation of the lecture one, but in the next lecture, that is in lecture three, we're going to move to the broader portion in, in agricultural economics. So let's start today's lecture, economic systems. So economic systems are the circular flow of goods and money. So every economy is a system in which the production of many goods is organized just to satisfy the human wants. But in an economic system, there are two units. So in the picture below, you can see here, the two units are households and the business or enterprise. So households means we consume the goods and services produced by the business sector. And also in return, we provide them the inputs. So inputs can be a capital or labor to the business firms. And if we see business or enterprises, they provide us the goods and services and also they will use the resources that is the inputs which we gave them. Okay, so now if we see how the goods and money, they, they just move in a circular flow is. So first we'll see in the household's point of view. Okay, so we all know in our home, like we consume the goods and services uh, produced by the different sectors. So it means we are buying the goods and services. If we buy them, it means we have to pay them the money. So when we pay them the money, how these sectors use that money is, they will use our money by um, giving the salaries to the laborers or paying their rents, like the like the land we own. Okay. So when they uh, pay the salary to the laborers, so ultimately some part of the salaries were used for the household purpose. It means again we'll consume the goods. I mean we can say the groceries for example. So again we'll buy the groceries. Again we'll give them the money. So these sectors they'll use the money or the grocery store people or the industries they'll use the money and they'll give the wages to the laborers. And, and again we'll use them. So this is the circular flow of goods and money in the household point of view. If we see in the business or enterprises point of view, the main aim of these business is just to provide the goods and services to the customers. So, so when they provide these goods and services to us, we'll buy them and in return what we are giving them. Inputs, labor or capital. So when we give them the labor or capital, again they'll produce the goods and services we require. And again we'll buy them. So this is another circular flow of goods and money. So if we observe correctly, this household and this business or enterprises, I mean, these two economic units are literally interrelated. Like without one, another doesn't exist. So this is how goods and money in an economic system works. We'll see types of economy. So there are three types of economies, capitalism, socialism and mixed economy. So first we'll see capitalism so capitalism is a system of economic organization characterized by the private ownership so this means like for example think you you own a private land and you build a house in that so in that house you and your family decided to live there so you in your private land in your private house you're making this happen for your own private benefit this means this means it is all you're doing this for yourself only. So this doing for yourself is called as capitalism, private ownership, private property, private motive or profit motive. This is capitalism. And the next is socialism. So socialism means it is for the economic growth of the country. So like for example, many buildings and many lands were owned by the government and also government builds many houses for the people for what for the economic growth of the country this means many production were owned by the state this is socialism and if you see what are the main aim of the socialism is to increase the economy of the country and this capitalism is literally for the private profit but the socialism is for social benefit is for us and the capital is for just for me we can say okay and the next is communism. So communism is a form of socialism which is basically followed in a Soviet Union. This means, see like for example, there are two lands, land one and land two. Okay, so the land one is owned by the government and the land two is owned by a, some group of community we can say. Okay, so, so in land one, government itself con constructs like 
like some sort of industry there and it o and it gets its own income from there it means only government is included in the land one whereas in land two community is included people are included so so in the land two people they work as a whole and they share the work and they share the income and also in that land two people are supposed to work according to their capacities and also they get according to their needs so if we say what is the main aim of communism so it is just to create a pure society and also state missionaries utilized to crush all the opposition to achieve this end but you know what is the main difference between uh, socialism and communism is in case of communism there will be a uh, violent revolutionary methods to capture the missionary of the government whereas in uh, socialism we can see a peace peaceful and parliamentary methods so because you know in case of uh socialism government is in, involved it have a good plan and it knows everything but in case of communism community is involved so you know there may be some distractions during the work so so if you ask me what is more beneficial socialism or communism i say socialism socialism is more benefited because this is for the country communism is for only a particular community okay and the next is mixed economy so mixed economy is neither pure capitalism nor pure socialism it's combination of both so like for example there are uh, two kinds of hospitals we know private and the government hospitals so we all know government hospitals are literally run run by the government and private hospitals they were run by the private sectors but we also know that since they are since they are private sectors just for name but the help of the government is important in the private hospitals so so it means it is a combination of both so you know like under the like see like for example in india economic development it cannot be achieved without the help of the government with the help of the government we can achieve everything but the name lies its private sector but for sure the government help will be there so this is mixed economy in this both private and public enterprises operate the mixed economy just to accelerate the economic growth next is if we see some other definitions like important definitions in the principle of agricultural economics first is goods and services so goods goods are any tangible commodity here commodity means a product okay so tangible commodity that satisfy the human want is good tangible means which we can touch we can feel they are called as tangible see like for example phone food clothes laptop car anything which you can touch you can feel them and which which can satisfy your need they are called as goods services means they are intangible commodities that satisfy the human want like customer care service or the cleaning services they will satisfy your needs but you can't touch them you can't feel them but for sure they will satisfy your needs they are called as services the name itself says service means without touching without feeling you can get them next are free goods and economic goods free goods means they are the goods or services that have no price at all like air sunlight do you have price for the air or the sunlight no you will get them for free and they will satisfy your need so air sunlight etc they are free goods and the economic goods is these goods that demand the price like the like the food you eat or the pen you buy or the clothes you buy etc which demands prices economic goods next are consumer and producer goods so these consumer goods that 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 directly satisfy your needs like for example if you want to write you will have a pen if you are hungry you will have food and if you are thirsty you will have water these are consumer goods they will directly like within short period of time they will satisfy your wants or needs and the producer goods are you will use these goods to produce the other commodities like for example tractor you'll just uh, plow the soil with the help of the tractor or you'll just use the tractor on on the soil just to produce for example paddy this means you are using a commodity a commodity means a tractor 
you're you're using a tractor just to produce a paddy it's another commodity these are producer goods next are perishable and durable goods so perishable goods means they decay very fast like food wheat on the fruits or vegetables they decay very fastly and durable goods means they have a long duration long shelf life like missionaries views okay so these are perishable goods and durable goods next are wealth and income so so if we see in the economic terms wealth means economic goods so what are economic goods which demands price but if we see in the normal terms like in a universal term wealth means money basically wealth means money we'll say we I have a lot of wealth means i have a lot of money but if we see in case of economic terms wealth means economic goods which can be easily transferable whereas income means flow from wealth so see so like for example uh, you have a car so car is economic good and you've just sold the car car like for 3 lakhs and that 3 lakhs is your income and the car you've sold is wealth clear so next is real income and money income so uh, so in economics income is divided based on commodity and based on money so if i say in case of commodity if the income is expressed in terms of commodity it is called as real income so like for example um, like like you're a shopkeeper and you and you've sold like 50 apples for for example 500 rupees here the main thing is 50 apples 50 apples is commodity and you've sold those 50 apples for 500 rupees so this means your income is expressed in terms of commodity it is expressed in terms of apples and you earn 500 rupees so this 500 rupees is your real income and money income is which is expressed in terms of money like for example uh, the income of a manager is like 20000 per month he's just a manager he is not dependent on any kind of commodity he is just dependent on a work right he he just does his work in in his bank so this is money income R- real income is expressed in terms of commodity money income is expressed in terms of money next is theory of consumer behavior so we all know like when we go to the market we you know we really face an important problem it's the decision choice like see like for example when you go to a, go to a shopping like when you go to a store there are two color shirts and and you'll be really uh, difficult to select the good one you like but you like both of them and it's really difficult to select the one which you like the most so so this is a the theory of consumer behavior so based on that there are two choices one is economic choice and the second is non economic non economic choice so basically economic choice you know they have a economic significance okay see like for example french fries okay you like french fries and if you eat them just you just eat them it is non economic choice if you mass produce them it is economic choice in this you you like both of them like in the economic and the non economic choice the same so the similar thing is you like french fries but the difference is in economic you decided to earn money by mass producing the french fries but in non economic you just decided to enjoy its taste this is the difference economic and non economic choices so based on this we have some definitions consumption so consumption is the use of the economic goods and services to satisfy the human wants so in this consumption we say there will be destruction of the utility so utility means the capacity of a good to satisfy you like for example you are super hungry and you have gone to domnus to just grab a pizza okay so you have ordered a pizza and you started eating it so in the starting you are really hungry but at the end your stomach is full it means that that pizza has satisfied your hunger it has satisfied the taste so that satisfaction is called as utility 
ओके सो इन दिस कंजम्पन वी आर दे आर सेंग दैट इट लीड्स टू डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द यूटिलिटी सो वील टेक द सेम एग्जाम्पल यू हैव गॉट डोमिनोज एंड यू स्टार्ट ईटिंग द पिज्जा सो एट द स्टार्टिंग देर आर फोर स्लाइसिस ऑफ पिज्जा एंड नाउ देर आर ओनली वन स्लाइस सो वॉट हैपन टू थ्री स्लाइसिस यू हैव ईटन दम इट मीन्स यू हैव डिस्ट्रॉयड द गुड actually <laughs> this means you have eaten the pizza so this is the destruction of the utility in terms of economic terms okay so so, so basically consumption is we'll use the economic good we know pizza is economic good because we'll buy the pizza so we'll use the economic good to satisfy our human needs this is consumption and want is anything that we desire is want and again if we take the same example you are hungry and you want to eat a pizza you want to eat a pizza means that's a want okay so the goods and services that satisfy the human wants they are divided into types of wants if we see one are necessaries so necessaries they are the goods and services that are essential for ex- for our existence if you want to live you should have those necessaries like food water without food and water you can't live like air also the oxygen you breathe it's necessary and and these necessaries are of three types necessaries for existence necessaries for efficiency and conventional necessaries so necessaries for existence means they are really essential for your existence food water air etc and next is necessaries for efficiency so these are the goods and services essential for maintaining the working capacity at a higher level like for example nutritious food this nutritious food you require but there is no need such a compulsion you should eat the nutritious food if not you will die no it's not like that you you eat this food this is this is full of nutrition and you will be healthy that's it so this is necessary for efficiency next is conventional necessaries so although some goods they are not of absolute necessary the people they tend to use them like all call coffee cigarettes etc there is no problem if you don't use them but you but some people use these products just out of the habit this is conventional necessaries and the next is comforts so they are the goods that lead to easy living like for example uh, if you have hair sorry air 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 that is necessary but fan is a comfort right and if you see luxuries they are the goods that are highly expensive and they do not in any way add to the efficiency of people even if you have the like for example like the luxurious example is bungalow ornaments and the and the huge expensive car even if you have them or if you don't have them you can live your life it's really good so these luxuries they you know they provide you uh, that kind of happiness like some people they are even we are literally into the luxuries like nowadays right next if we see what are the characteristics of wants right so wants they are unlimited in number and variety so as i've told you like in an example so if you have a brand new iphone in your hands and in the next 6 months if a new iphone has launched so it means yes i want that iphone this is wants are unlimited even how much you try to satisfy your wants your wants will be coming all the time so it's unlimited and and you have a variety of wants also next particular want is satiable this means say like for example uh, if a person is hungry he is just hungry so if you give him some food so that he'll be satisfied it it's just a single want if you if you give him some food to the hunger hungry people or or hungry person he'll just get satisfied for a particular point of time next is wants are recurrent as i've told you how much you have also you you just want more and more and more so wants are recurrent and wants are competitive so like for example there are two people one is for example he's a beggar and the second is a man so that beggar is literally so hungry and he's asking for any kind of food and the second man he's he's hungry he's just hungry and he is want to grab some pizza so which will will you feed whom will you feed first either beggar or the normal pizza man pizza man so we all know this beggar he is most important so we'll feed them 
this means wants a competitor we have chose this beggar over the pizza man okay and the next are wants are alternative so so if you like like one day you've got a desire just to drink a cup of tea but the tea is not available and the coffee goes good so you'll select a coffee so wants are alternative and wants tend to become a habit so like for example coffee like one day just for a desire we've just had a coffee on the early morning so in the next days we'll be start having it so it's a habit we'll start having it has a habit like for example coffee taking coffee after a breakfast so these are the characteristics of wants next we'll see standard of living so a person named kirkpatrick he defined standard of living as the measure or the evaluated amounts of different kinds of qualities of economic goods involved in meeting the needs and wants of different individual composing a family see for example in a family of four members so each and every one's want is different like in those four members there will be four different wants for instance so the capacity of the economic goods to satisfy all those family members is called as standard of living if you see what are the determinants of standard of living they basically de- depends on the real income but not on the money income of the family real income means they are expressed in terms of commodity next is they depend on number of members in the family so if there are more number of members more wants less number of members less wants and also it depends on the price like if the price is lower we can satisfy the more number of wants of the family if the price is more it will take time to satisfy all the wants so this is the standard of living so this is it guys so in today's lecture we have seen the definitions and concepts of the agricultural economics but in next lecture we'll move to the main portion of the agricultural economics so thank you for watching If you have any queries you can ask us in our Instagram page or you can post in the comment section and also you can download this PPT in the link given below So till then take care stay tuned bye bye